Yeah. The the Temple of Gravity, 180,000 pounds of stone hanging from steel. Um, this is the latest yeah. place for it. Fucking camera. <laughs> this is too hard. No, no, no. It was so much easier when we were both on drugs. <laughs> Um, what do we say? Well, give me more yeah, then. What, what, why did you, where did you come up with the idea? How did you come up with the idea? So I came up with the idea last year when I learned that the theme of Burning Man was beyond belief, which is having to do with faith and issues like that. So I figured in this day and age, gravity is the only thing we can believe in. Truly the only thing we can believe in. So I built this structure of stone and steel. It weighs about 180,000 pounds. Five slabs hanging, each hanging slab weighs between 13,000 and 17,000 pounds. Five steel poles make up the basic structure. Five slabs of rock on the ground. It's all Elberton, Elberton granite, the stone. Um, well, revelations are a, a tough one, but I did learn a lot. And I learned that one of the most complicated processes of building a project or structure like this is not necessarily the physical building of it but it's in coordinating and dealing with all the nutty people that tend to show up and uh, you have to deal with mm. this one truckers it took four semis to move this and this is the second time we moved it and both times have been mm, shall we say interesting in terms of the trucking profession um, so you won't be voting for the Teamsters this year. <laughs> none of these guys were Teamsters. Maybe that was the. Yeah. Maybe I needed union workers. Maybe I needed union truck drivers. Maybe that was my problem. Who knows? Uh, tell us a little bit about the physics of it. Like, uh, why is it safe? Because I've seen like twenty-five people swing on each one of these things. This piece is safe because it's built. It's built strong. It's built like cranes are built and buildings are built and dams are built power stations are built it's built strong and steel and stone we've got 180,000 pounds of, of stone and steel the total weight is about 180,000 pounds we've got five slabs hanging in the air from these chains um, the chains are 5 8 inch heavy heavy high strength lifting chain uh, each stone, uh, where, where the hanging stones weigh between 13,000 and 17,000 pounds each. What, what could the chain withstand if... Uh... Uh, I forget offhand, but I think about 100,000 pounds, maybe 110,000 pounds is breaking strength. So you're like 80,000 pounds. Overbuilt oh, on each right. chain. Yes, yes. We, we built this to last, last the, last the time. And, you know, when 30 people are swinging on each rock, there's a lot of weights going on. There's, it's, 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 uh, there's a lot of forces involved. Um, I quite liked when you were talking earlier, because it doesn't really occur to you when you build art that it might be around in a hundred years. So maybe a little point there. Well, it occurs to me. Yeah. It, um, it didn't I, until you said it to me, though. Oh yeah, yeah. This this piece is completely built for the long haul. Um, if we if we end up selling it and putting it in a desert environment like this, we could possibly get away with not treating the steel and just using that steel it'll probably last I don't know 200 years something like that or maybe in 200 years they'll have a very very sophisticated rust prevention but still looks like rust coating to keep it and if we do it somewhere on the east coast or somewhere in a moist environment we'll galvanize the steel we'll dip it in molten zinc and then it'll last who knows longer many many generations any uh, funny experiences building it Lots of them. Let's have a few. <sighs> and my mind goes blank on that. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I've got a little bit of footage from building it at Burning Man. Mm -hmm. I shot some there. All right, so right. anything that happened there that was kind of amusing. Hmm. Well, one, one thing that careful, was... Careful, you're, you're oops, out of frame a little bit. Oops, there you go. Okay, there go. Good. One thing that, that was really interesting was um, building it in the desert. And we ended up getting this great crane operator, and we told him, "Hey, you know, we'll we'll you know we'll have it done in mm, six, seven, eight hours, something like that. Drive up to the desert; it'll be really cool." He didn't really know what he's going to get into, but he knew about Burning Man a little bit. He shows up on Monday. Our last truck that we needed didn't show up until Wednesday, 
So he ended up, we had kidnapped him. He was out of Burning Man, stuck in the, stuck in the desert, came out for one day, ended up being there for almost four. <laughs> and had a great sense of humor about it. That was a good thing. I don't know if it was strange. Um, had, there's been at least, there were at least four weddings. Um, two of which I know about were official, legal weddings um, during Burning Man. What else? Anyone get hurt? No. I think there was there was apparently some scraping. The rock is very sharp, and there were some people doing some bouldering and attempted bouldering, and apparently there was a little blood on the on the on the stone. But if you don't bleed on it, it's not art. <laughs> I have to put a lot of art around the world, man. Um, what do you want to see happen to it? Well. Uh, we, we built the Temple of Gravity using a corporate structure and investors who've helped um, put the money into building it. And what we really want to do is we want to first and foremost have a return for our investors because they were so kind as to um, provide the resources to do this. So we're looking to sell it. And my personal preference would be to sell it to, in, in a, to, in a, to a place that will provide a a beautiful environment and but also allow people mm, or the public to come and play with it um, uh, a museum a uh, sculpture park some some place like that where it's open and free to the public to come and experience this pretty remarkable structure has it changed your life in any way? I, I, yeah it's changed my life it's um, it was a huge leap of faith, and it was a, a piece where not only did I make a leap of faith, but a lot of people were willing to make the leap of faith with me. I have some really dynamic business partners that really allowed us to do what we needed to do. Um, and from that perspective, recognizing the power of a team and all the people that will get involved because they, they, they see passion, they see the they see the the dream of the piece and they can see it in their mind I, I think that was that was really powerful it was a powerful experience for me uh how do you i mean your art is a little different from a painted oil painting you know yeah yours is is a little more interactive why do you do that well i don't have any problem with painting um but as i look at the you know the history of contemporary art um, and see myself within that continuum I I really want to be working in the medium right in the the physicality of of this of the sculpted object or the physical object uh, and also I approach things from the perspective of an engineer or a bridge builder um, I'm just building structures that, whose primary purpose isn't to cross a gorge, or maybe not a physical gorge, maybe it's a, 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 a mental gorge, right? A, a contemplation, uh, a specific space. So maybe I'm building those kind of structures, but I'm much more from the perspective of an engineer. And the logistics and everything else about that is part and parcel of the process. Did you ever wander out across the desert and come upon your art piece? And stand there whilst you're watching other people look at it. Yeah, though I often drove up in a Cadillac, but <laughs> we just happened to have one there. But yeah, it was uh, it, it, at Burning Man. It was busy. People played with this sculpture a lot. Did you ever just sit back and just when I get a like a megaphone and go, <coughs> guys, um, I did this? No. No, I don't need to do that. Sometimes I call it the monster, but that's only when I'm pissed off about how much work it's taking to move it. Come back into the frame a little bit. All right. Um, it took four semi trucks. Let's do some basic stuff. This um, the, this is the second place the Temple of Gravity has been installed. It's installed. Well, the third place. Did you, did you ever put it up in the? Mm -mm. You didn't. Oh. No, it didn't exist until all the pieces came together, and it didn't exist in one place until all the pieces came together from Elberton, Georgia, Atlanta, Georgia, and Birmingham, Alabama. The trucks were loaded separately, 
and all of them arrived in the desert. So this is the second time it's been put up. It's been put up in a place called We Care Spa, which is a holistic heating, cell, heating, heating center. Say that again. Uh, it's put up in a place called We Care Spa, which is a holistic healing center in Palm Desert, California. Um, I don't know the name of the mountain behind me, but it's a doozy. It's a beautiful mountain. This is a this is some gorgeous country, and uh, it's a real joy to have it here. Um, we've guaranteed that the piece will be here for at least a year. It might be here for as long as three. Um, we are actively pursuing selling the sculpture, and uh, we'll be able to transport it to its new location after one year. Cool. Merry Christmas. Yeah, that was good. I mean, we got, got some nice stuff there, so that was yeah, cool. Yeah, a little piece, piece yeah. of this and that. Yeah.